uh, give West Virginia and the Mountaineers a ton of credit. Um, it was a great atmosphere. Uh, obviously, we had to, to deal with the weather, and I think that changed some things. But uh, it was a great atmosphere. I thought they battled us very, very uh, tough, especially early on. Um, but we were able to you know, do some pretty good things as the game went on. And then when you talk about the critical statistics that we talk about all the time, uh, we won most of them. So the turnover battle, we won that three to three to one. Um, explosive play battle, we won that. We met our goal on offense as well uh, at 18.3%. Uh, third down battle, we won that. Um, I think we can improve in that area. That was one of the big challenges I thought early in the game. Uh, we weren't converting on third down and they sustained some drives. The time of possession was way out of whack to put our defense in a tough spot. That's a combination of the offense sustaining drives and the defense getting more three and outs. Um, sack battle, uh, we were able to win that. Um, obviously, we need to get some sacks earlier in the game, but overall, uh, we got the job done when it was needed. Um, and then st starting field position was a push. Uh, the penalty battle is the one thing that really stood out today that we did not win. And I thought really impacted the game. Um, we let them, let them off the hook when they were backed up the one time. It made it difficult to get into a rhythm on offense. I thought the penalties early really affected us getting into a rhythm. And then the one time where they clapped our cadence and we snapped the ball, that, that created, um, I think, challenges for us to get into a rhythm early on. But besides that, uh, did some really good things. It was great to see Trey. A guy that we've been talking about for a while have a big game, uh, give you guys you know something something to, to write about. Um, obviously, we want to try to get everybody involved um, in the run game, in the pass game, and all those things. But overall, I thought we did some really good things. We're gonna watch this tape. There's gonna be a ton of stuff that we didn't like and that we need to get cleaned up. But uh, we were able to come on the road in a very very tough environment. Uh, and get a win against a team that I think is really, um, you know, I don't know what the right word is, underranked or whatever it is. I think, I think that's a good football team. I think they're going to end up having a really good year. So we're appreciative of coming out here with a W. And uh, you guys want to get home to your families because we had a long delay and, and so do we. So I'm going to take one question and I'm leaving. <laughs> Mark and then Rich. James, what did you learn from that Michigan State situation several years ago with, with the delay? Because it looked like things went much more smoothly, for lack of a better way of putting it, this time around. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, obviously, after that situation, um, you know, we kind of put in all types of plans and policies to be aware of that. It also helped that before coming here, we knew this was a possibility. So uh, it's hard to go to Chick-fil-A at closing time and ask him to stay open and come up with an order for a football team. That's what happened in East Lansing um, with Monica, um, our, our police officer going to do that for us. So this was obviously a much better situation. It's still challenging when you're the visiting team because you're stuck in a, in a very small locker room. You know, that's not a critique on West Virginia. It's like that everywhere. Um, and they have all their facilities to be able to use. So there's some real challenges that come with that. I think you guys saw we created kind of out here in the tunnel some more space. I thought that was helpful as well. And then we just had plenty of food. And again, because we knew that this was a possibility, uh, we were able to get ahead of it from that standpoint. So I thought that was a positive. And then obviously having, having the, the iPads is also another huge advantage, obviously. You're, you're, you're not just killing time, you're actually watching tape, evaluating tape, grading tape, a lot of things that we could get done during that time. Rich and then Todd. James, how do you think your players handled the delay and how important was it to come out in the second half and score on that first drive? Yeah, I thought that opening drive was huge. You know, we talk about the middle eight a lot in our program. We got the score right before the half, which I thought was really important. Um, and then you come out and get this, you know, the score to start the second half. That's great. We stalled out the next two drives. We, we got to get that fixed. Um, but I thought our guys handled it really well. I thought our staff handled it really well. And it was reflected in coming out, you know, with a, with a, a touchdown to start the second half. So those middle eight scores, I think, were probably the two most significant in the game, the end of the first half and the start of the second half. Todd and then Allie. Coach, within that drive, Drew had a couple of really nice runs to keep the chains moving. Can we talk about 
how he performed running the ball, and then Bo's throw late to Tyler for the touchdown, put things on tape for, for teams to, you know, as we talked about, Bo throwing and, and Drew running a bit more. Yeah, we call him Lamar Alar, and he kind of looks <laughs> like him, right? Um, you know, I thought he ran better than probably people expected last year. He's dropped 10 pounds. Um, I think he's done a really good job in the weight room becoming more explosive. We always talk like, you know, obviously mobility at the quarterback position is important, but if your quarterback can get you just two to three first downs a game with his legs, it changes everything. And uh, I thought that showed up today. Some things that we got to get cleaned up, obviously, um, you know, in terms of, you know, third down, I think we can be better in that area. But overall, I, I thought that was big. And then, obviously, as you guys know, Bo's going to have a big part of the game plan. That was a big part um, of our thought of starting with a two-point play, get him involved as early as possible in the game. Plus, we had a play that we liked. Um, it didn't. It didn't obviously play, uh, pay out that way or pan out that way. Um, but but you know, Drew uh, Bo is going to be a big part of what we're doing moving forward. So we wanted to get him involved as early as possible. Allie, then pickle. We talked this week, James, about week one and all the difficulties that that comes with traveling with new guys, implementing three new coordinators, things of that nature. To get a win like this on the road, you're setting up for a month here at home. What can you take from this as you build into the, the bulk of your season here? Yeah, I think, you know, you guys saw it today um, across the country. We've seen it every year. These opening games playing th these types of opponents, um, you know, they're tough and they're challenging. Um, you know, it's a philosophy, right? Um, athletic directors have a big role in this. Head coaches have a big role in this. What, what type of games are you going to schedule in your out-of-conference games? Um, and what's, what's in everybody's best interest? You see across the country, you know, you start out with a, with a tough loss and you play maybe not as clean as you normally play because you're still working through some of the kinks. Um, obviously, when you get the win, you know, it's, it's a huge positive. Um, but if you don't, then, you know, it, it can really start your season off the wrong path and you're going to have to battle through it. You know, your point is we're going to be at home for a couple weeks. Pro that's probably also not positive. You'd prefer not to have, whether we have four straight home games. Um, I think for some fan bases, that would be an issue. It's not for ours. Uh, the support that we get in Beaver Stadium and State College and the state of Pennsylvania and the region is phenomenal. We'll be able to handle that. Um, They'll be asking for a fifth one after the fourth one. But, um, but you know, coming here and getting a win in this type of environment, when it works, I think it's a huge win. But, you know, the, the, the question is, does it really make sense? Um, you know, and, and obviously me and Pat have had a ton of conversations, and he's got strong opinions on it. Pickles and Jared. Coach, you saw your offense against your defense and vice versa all month. Now that you saw each side of the ball against an opponent, did you feel like the way you came out of camp, what you saw there, carried over to today? Yeah, I think I think we got a chance to be good on both sides of the ball. I think we got a chance to be more balanced on, on both sides of the ball. Um, and when I talk about balance, I'm talking about you know both being able to win on the defense side of the ball, being able to win on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and I thought there was examples of that today. I, I think I think they do a really good job on offense. I think their O-line coach is excellent. Um, and I think they do a really good job. So they created some challenges for us. The quarterback's going to be a problem, just like it was for a lot of people all, all year long. They got two elite backs. Um, so I think our defense played really well. And if you look at us even last year, you know, where we started at the beginning of the year compared to where we were at the, la the end of the year, I think that's kind of the reality and the approach that we have to have. We just we just got to get better each week. If we get better each week of the season, we'll like where we're at come the end. We'll go Jerry, and then we'll go down front here. Thank you, Coach Franklin. Um, earlier this week, you mentioned that playing an opponent like West Virginia in week one could maybe show some things that you don't show until later on, like week two or three. Uh, how do you feel like you all were able to manage that today? Could you say that one more time? I apologize. Sorry. So earlier in the week, I was distracted by my guy with the Phillies hat with the ammo, <laughs> with the ammo lid on it because he's trying to kind of like be Penn, Penn State supportive and connect with West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, earlier in the week you said uh, sometimes uh, playing an opponent like West Virginia in week one, um, you can show some things that don't show up until later on in the season. How do you feel like you all are able to manage that today? Then? Not totally understanding your question. Um, 
I'm not, I'm not totally understanding your question. Um, I know this is the third time. Yeah, I mean, um, I you guess, said some, Jake. You said some things could show up in week four or five, and because you're playing a quality opponent, they show up in week one. You said that on Monday, and he's saying, "How did that go?" You know, that, that's his question. He doesn't get another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I guess what I'm saying is, when you play this type of opponent. I think you're forced and challenged both both physically and mentally and, and as coaches right out of the gate. Um, and I think we were going to be tested. And I thought today we were tested. Um, we battled through some things. We grinded through some situations. We found a way to create some explosive plays. We grinded out some first downs. Same thing on the defensive side of the ball. So playing this type of opponent, I think you get tested earlier in the season where some people are playing – Opponents not like that. So I think that's really just kind of what I was referencing is how you're challenged. The, the environment challenges, you got to be able to handle that. Um, you know, the opponent challenges. This team's going to win a ton of games in the Big 12, in my opinion. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. We'll go down front if you can introduce yourself. And Hi, I'm John Ravy with the Associated Press. Hey, Joe. I'm not this short. Um, <laughs> the big plays. Uh, does one game solve your concerns about explosive plays, or is it just like you said, uh, we just have to keep Along. No, but that one play, and this may be too soon, but that one play looked like we just chucked it deep down the middle of the field. <laughs> <laughs> too soon, too soon. <laughs> um, and I thought Omari coming back and making a play on that was, was huge. I said, I think I said at halftime, since the 90s, ducks accepted, spirals preferred. Um, I've been chucking, I chucked a bunch of those ducks up myself. But um, I think when you got players like that, that can make plays in open space, and that f scare you with their speed. Omari can run one, and when when you when you're in open field and you got to cover 53 and a third, and you don't know where the ball is, and they do, that's not a great position to be in. And when I was so proud of Omari, was fighting through the contact back for the ball that created the pass interference contact. Um, so that was huge. I mean, we, you know, we got to it today. We got to our goal, which was which was positive. Um, you know, in terms of 18%, our goal is 15% each week, so that's a positive. Um, but as you guys know, we got to do it week in and week out. And I thought we, we really grinded the run game, uh, and then Nick was able to, you know, you know bust a few there that, that really you know, changes the, the stats, changes the numbers. So that, that was good for us. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.